guys, it's me, Bethany, from Whistle and Ivy. Today we're gonna be making this fun and snarky crochet tote. Totally perfect for your next beach getaway. It features the phrase, it's not knit. Why? It's a tongue-in-cheek nod to you crocheters who have ever been out and asked about your knitting. I'm making this tote with Red Heart's brand new yarn called Scrubby Smoothie. It's deliciously soft, it's 100% cotton. Isn't this color dreamy? So grab four skeins of Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie and let's dive in. Okay, so we're gonna get started on our tote. So get out your Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie yarn. And I'm using a G-hook. Um, the gauge isn't super important for this project. Um, I just like to have a tight gauge, you know, tight stitches so that the bag is tighter and more firm. Um, so please note that if you're using a larger hook or um, if your gauge is looser, then your bag will have looser stitches and your bag will overall be larger. So we're going to start with a chain 73. So work 73 chains. Okay, so there is our 73 chains. Kind of a long chain we're starting with. And then you're going to work two single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to work back down your chain. You're going to work one single crochet in every single chain and then stop when you get to that last chain. Okay, so once you reach that last chain, you're going to work four single crochet all together in that last chain. And this will bring you to the other side of the chain. So now you're going to work a single crochet in each chain all the way across until you get back to that very first chain where you worked the, the initial two single crochet. Okay, so we have reached that first chain the second chain from the hook, the initial chain where you work the two single crochet, you're going to go into that same chain and work two more single crochet so that you have four total in that last chain. <clears throat> and then you're going to join with the slip stitch so if you can get your hook into that first single crochet. And then you're going to join it and then you have this long piece, this is the foundation. So that is the end of row one. So to begin row two, you're going to begin with a chain one, you're going to single crochet two in that same stitch, and then single crochet two in the next stitch. So we're working our increase around the round part, the round end. And then you're going to work a single crochet in each stitch along the side. You should have 70 stitches along here, so work at 70 single crochet stitches, one in each stitch along the side, until you reach the other round side. Okay, so we've reached the other round side, and so you have the four stitches that make up the end. So you're going to work two single crochet in each of these four stitches. So two in the next stitch, and then two in the next three stitches. And then, this brings us to the other side, so you're going to work 70 single crochet stitches all the way back until you get to these two single, cro single crochet, crochet stitches from the first round. So work 70 single crochet stitches down the side. Okay, so we've reached those final two single crochet stitches and you're going to work two in each of them. So the seam actually splits right down the middle between these two stitches. Um, so the seam is right down the side. It'll be right down the side of the bag. And then you're going to join with the first single crochet. 
Okay, so we're moving on to round three. You're gonna chain one. You're gonna single crochet in the same stitch. And then you're gonna work your increase in the next stitch. So two in the following stitch. And then repeating that, you're gonna work a single crochet in the next stitch and then the increase, two single crochet in the next stitch. And then work your 70 single crochet down the side until you get to the other end. Okay, so we're back to that other round end. So you're going to work a single crochet in the next stitch and then your increase in the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that three more times. Okay, and then you're going to work your 70 single crochet back down the side. Okay, so we've reached the other half of that beginning round side. So you're going to work a single crochet after the 70. You're going to work a single crochet in the next stitch. Two single crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet. In the next stitch and then two single crochet in that last stitch and then slip stitch to join okay so that does it for the increases so for round 4 through 13 you're gonna chain one and you're gonna work a single crochet in each stitch around and then join with the slip stitch when you come back around so you're gonna repeat that we're going to be now building the sides of the bag. So repeat that um, till you get to row, finish row 13, and then we'll start working in double crochet when we get to round 14. Okay, so we have completed round 13, and so we're going to move on to round 14. And um, we're going to be switching to double crochet, and we're going to be start doing a fillet crochet technique. And um, you will see fillet crochet a lot in like very dainty little doilies and different um, delicate crochet things, um, normally with crochet thread. But I'm using it with this worsted weight yarn and it's a really cool effect. So you're going to start with a chain three. The reason why you're chaining three is because the first two are the height of the stitch and then the one is going to be the chain one that we're going to be working in between the stitches. So um, this chain three is going to count as the first stitch in the first chain. So you're going to skip that same stitch. You're going to skip the next stitch because that's where the chain is going to be above. And then you're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And this looks really funky at first, but when you come back around and join it, you're going to join in that second chain and it's going to pull it over and make it look like a square. So for this round, the entire way around, you're going to, you're going to double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. So we're creating these little holes, these little boxes. So chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. So you're gonna have the same amount of chains or same amount of stitches all the way around because the chains are counting as stitches. You're skipping a stitch, every other stitch. So you're gonna make this, this, uh, this box, this hole, the square hole all the way around and you're going to work that for two rounds. So for 14 and 15 you're going to work um, this double crochet chain one um, stitch. Okay so when you reach the beginning you're going to skip that last stitch, you're going to chain one and then you're going to slip stitch into the second chain We've got three chains there. So you're going to slip stitch and join into the second chain. And then that completes the round. So you're going to repeat that round and you're going to work in the stitches. So you're going to, they're not going to be off centered, you're not going to be working through the holes. You're going to be making, you're going to work in the exact same stitches 
that first chain is kind of tight. Oh, sorry, you're not going to be working in that because you're going to count this as a chain three. I'm so used to working a stitch in the same in the same space. So you're going to chain three, and then that counts as the first double crochet and the chain, and then you're going to be working in the double crochets from the previous round. So this is row 15, round 15. So finish that round and then we will start the graph. Okay, so now we're ready. We have finished row 15, round 15, and now we're going to move on to round 16. And this is where we're going to begin working our graph. Um, and fillet cro crochet can be a little bit confusing because if you're used to color work, then you're used to one color on the graph being one stitch or two stitches if, you know, you're two double crochets equals one square on a graph, depending on what you've done in color work, this is different and you're going to have to kind of let your brain think in a different way. So what this is, is this is basically, you're, we're working all these empty squares and this is quite literally the graph, right? So we have these lines or the, you know, the vertical lines or the lines separating each square and this line is the horizontal line separating each square and, this, and, the, and the hole in between is the square. So if you think of it that way, when we come to one of these stitches where we're working the graph, instead of working a chain and having a hole like you've done on all the other squares, you're going to work a double crochet there and fill it in. So fillet crochet is basically just filling in the holes according to the graph. So let's get started on round 16 and so you're going to work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven empty squares seven empty boxes. So we're going to start the way we started all the other rounds with a chain three and then double crochet in the first double crochet. So that's our first box and we're going to work seven total that will get us over to that period of the graph. Okay, so there's our seven holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're going to work in the graph. So this right here is we're going to work that spot on the graph by working a double crochet in the space. So instead of chaining one there, as we've been doing, you're going to work a double crochet. And that fills in the hole, and that is what's going to form the pattern as we go along. So everything is going to have holes except for the graph. So we just work the period by working a double crochet in the hole. And now we have two squares after it, two regular squares with holes. So we're going to chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet. So there's the period and then there's the two holes. The white on the graph indicates just regular stitches with holes with the chain one and skip. So now we're, we're coming over here to the bottom of the T and so we have two stitches that need to be filled in. And so we're at this chain and so we're going to work the double crochet into the chain and then we're going to do it again. So we're not so much counting stitches here. What we're doing is we're filling in the holes. You're creating the graph. Like I said before, you're creating the graph with your piece and then you're filling in the holes as you go along. So um, five stitches will equal two. So that's why it can get confusing because they share, the boxes share a side. So this is the left side of this box but the right side of this box. So five stitches will cover two boxes. So try not to get too hung up on counting stitches because that's where it can get a little confusing. If you think of it as filling in the boxes then it's a little bit easier to understand. So we've done the two at the bottom of the T and now we have two empty boxes. There's our two empty boxes and then we have four filled in boxes. So we're going to work it in the chain. Um, I'm working in the back loop of the chain. This is simply for ease of use. I hate slowing down to try to get my hook into both loops, but you can do either. 
so we filled in two boxes and we need to fill in a total of four. There's our third one. And there's our fourth one. So moving on, then we have one empty box after that, one space, one hole. And then we have two filled in boxes. So I'm gonna work a double crochet in the next chain. And then a double crochet in the following chain after that. That's the two boxes and then two empty boxes. So we've worked the two empty boxes and then we're going to work two filled in boxes for the other side of the N. There's one. There's two. Then we're gonna work one empty box as we start into the K. And then we're gonna work two filled in boxes. There's one. There's two. So that's this part of the K. So now we're going to work one, two, three, four empty boxes. There's our four, and then to finish the last part of the K, we're going to work two filled in boxes. Okay, so that is the first part of the graph. So this is the front of the bag, and on the back of the bag is going to just be the empty boxes. So when you're done with the graph, I have, you know, the extra space on here, but you're just going to simply work the empty boxes all the way back around until we get to row 17. So finish your row and then we're going to move on to round 17. Okay, so now we're starting round 17. So this round is going to, um, it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, empty boxes. So we're going to start it the way we started all the others with the chain 3. And we'll work 10 boxes. Okay, so now we've worked our 10 boxes. So now on the graph, we're going to work 2 filled in boxes right above the 2 filled in boxes that we already have. And so you're simply going to work a double crochet in each of those double crochets from the previous round. And then moving on, we're going to work three empty boxes. Oh, and be very aware that you're working in the sides. I almost put my hook and worked in the double crochet, the fill, the fill double crochet, the one in the middle from the previous round. So make sure you're working in the sides, you know, in the, the double crochets when you're working that, when you're working on top of a filled one. So there's our three empty ones. So now we're going to work two filled in ones. There's one. And there's two. And then we're going to work two empties after that. And 
And then we're going to work two filled in ones, which is again right on top. So we're going to work a double crochet in each of the double crochets below from the previous round. Then we're going to work two empty boxes. Then we're going to work two more, so we're going to work them right on top again of the previous round. And then we're going to work one empty, oh sorry, two empties because we're, we're building the, the slanted K part. And then we're going to work two filled in boxes. And then we're going to work three empty boxes. So there's our three empty ones, and then you're going to finish by working a double crochet, four or two um, filled in boxes, so working a double crochet in each of the, the four double crochets that are right there, five total if you're counting the one side of the empty. Okay, so that completes round two, uh, 17, the second round of the graph, and again you're going to just finish out the row by working the holes empty boxes and then hopefully with this information you'll be able to work the rest of the graph so um, you're gonna finish out you know doing what we did working the filled ones by filling in the holes and when you get up here work the regular DC chain one skip work all the way up to row 38 um, finish row 38 and we will join back up to work 39 together Okay, and we are back. I have finished the graph. Hopefully you finished yours as well. You can see that the graph includes two rows of just the regular um, double crochet, chain one, skip one. So I've included that in the graph and you can see it says the words. Now keep in mind that fillet crochet is normally done with um, lace or fingering weight yarn. And so it is a little bit of a challenge to get the uh, the design to pop in this big of color, but I think it turned out really, really nice. So we're going to finish the bag. So you are done with your graph. And now we're going to finish and put on the handles. Okay, so starting in row 39, 38 was this last row of the graph. So starting in 39, we're going to work a single crochet in each stitch around. So you can start with a chain one, single crochet into that same stitch tricky getting into that one. And then work in in each stitch around and as I mentioned before um, I just grabbed the back loop of the chain. This is my personal preference in simply working quicker if you want to take the time to get your hook through both loops you can definitely do that. Okay so we finished up this last row so we're going to join with the slip stitch Okay, so that's the first round of single crochet, and now you're going to work three more for a total of four rounds. So you're going to work row 39, 40, 41, and 42 are going to be a round of single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch. So you're going to begin each row with a chain one, work a single crochet in each stitch around, and then join. Okay, so moving on to round 43, you're going to chain one, you're going to work a single crochet in the next 27 stitches. Okay, and so here, from here we're going to make the handle of the bag. So you're going to chain 60. Okay, 
there's our 60. And then you're going to skip 28 stitches on your bag. So there's the 28th stitch, so you're going to stitch, so you're going to work in the 29th one, having skipped 28. And then that's our first single crochet, so you're going to work 53 more. So you have 54 single, total single crochet stitches there. Okay, so that's 54. So we're going to chain 60 again for the other handle. Okay, there's 60. And again, we're going to skip 28 stitches. There's the 28th stitch, so we're going to work there into the next one. And then work a single crochet in each remaining stitch. Okay, and we're going to join that row with a slip stitch. Okay, and now moving on to round number 44. You're going to start the chain one single crochet in the same stitch and then you're going to single crochet in each stitch around including each of the chains and you've heard me mention before that um, you can either work in the back loop which is what i do just because i can quickly grab that back loop whereas it takes me quite a bit of time to get my hook through both loops so you can choose to do either whichever you prefer So finish out the round by working a single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, so that completes row 44. So for the next four rows, um, 45 through 48, you're going to work, uh, you're going to repeat that row and you're going to chain one, single crochet in each stitch around, and join with the slip stitch. Once you finish that last row, you are finished. So be sure to weave in your ends. And I hope that you enjoyed making this crochet bag today. It was a lot of fun to design it. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about filet crochet. So thank you so much for making this bag with me today and I will see you next time. Bye.